Please rise for our national anthem. Ba da ba da ba. I'm loving it. This, this is, is a hot, hot dog, dog is a sandwich. sandwich. Ketchup is a smoothie. Yeah, I put ice in my cereal, so what? That makes no sense. A hot dog is a sandwich. A hot dog is a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> what? Welcome to our podcast, A Hot Dog is a Sandwich. I'm your host, Josh Sher. And I'm your host, Nicole Anaiti. And today we are joined by comedian and podcaster Jamie Loftus, who just published her first book, Raw Dog, The Naked Truth About Hot Dogs. Raw Dog takes readers on a... Thank you, Vanna Nicole. <laughs> Raw Dog takes readers on a journey across the U.S. during the summer of 2021, exploring the origins, cultural significance, and class implications of hot dogs in American society. Raw Dog is filled with plenty of laughs, vivid descriptions of diarrhea, and even the occasional run-in with a meth dealer. Oh, ho! Jamie, welcome to the pod. Yay! Welcome, That's Jamie! the best intro to the book I've ever heard. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, I, I was totally <laughs> taken by the book. Um, Me too. Also, the story in Albuquerque with the, the meth hotel. They called it the meth haunted house. The meth haunted house. <laughs> Not yeah. to distract from the hot dogs of the book. Um, yeah. But that was just an incredible experience. That was a fun conversation with my editor where she was like, I don't know that this is relevant to hot dogs. And you're like, it stays. It's all it relevant stays. to hot dogs. We are in America. <laughs> it's relevant important. to hot dogs. Exactly. Exactly. The meth haunted hotel. I wish everyone well there. <laughs> <laughs> Have you followed up? Do you still talk to the, the front desk person? <sighs> no, I, I tried to get my... I tried to get refunded for it, and then, <laughs> and then I ended up talking to the same person. And I was just like, "This is, this isn't going to go anywhere." Mm-hmm. I have to accept yeah. that I'm losing seventy two dollars today um, at the Meth Haunted Hotel. But you know, it was a good. Ex- I lived. You I lived. You lived to tell the tale. It's important. Yes. Yeah. Agreed. Anytime somebody says, "I got struck by lightning four times," the immediate reaction is, "No, you don't." And now anything that comes out of your mouth is going to be utterly crazy. <laughs> And it sure was. I think um, that's a good like a uh, good gauge of what kind of person you are, though. Because yeah. when she said that, I was like, "Oh wow, that's so unlucky." <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it was lightning. She's had such a difficult life. <laughs> I think she has, and Which I don't is... think it's because of the lightning. <laughs> uh, Any whom, um, tell me what you learned about hot dogs through this journey. So we we're titling this podcast. What's the most American food? That's you right. mentioned how hot dogs are deeply American for a variety of reasons. Yes. Do you think that they are the most American food? Ooh, I think they're pretty American food. I feel like it's really easy to argue that hot dogs are not American at all because sure. they are Greek and Polish mostly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but they're really American because they really insist that they're American, even though they're not. That's and what it's all about. <laughs> it's all like a marketing scheme, um, which is my – the best and worst thing about hot dogs, they're just like trying to tell you that you're more American for having eaten one when it has mm-hmm. sort of nothing to do with anything. And then, well, this is depressing, but like the, the most American thing about a hot dog is that it's like made unethically with like horrific labor practices mm-hmm. and uh, makes you sick. Go hot dogs. I love hot dogs <laughs> no, but so it, it, much. It, like you, you talk a lot about the industrial process of hot yes, dogification, do. which I love because, I mean, that's something we – talk a lot about on the show that it's Mm -hmm. literally, you know, going back to like Upton Sinclair's The Jungle Mm -hmm. and talking about just taking all the head scraps of animals and organ meats and then now going to the pink slime. Mm -hmm. Like that um, spitting in the face of God via industrial technology, that's very American. Yes. You know, and I think all about that. And I mean, again, as somebody who like frequents 7-Elevens to eat food, I Mm -hmm. myself as well. I completely agree, and I love it because I was raised on this stuff. Right, it's, and that's like something I thought was going to happen when I was researching the book. I was like, I'll be a vegetarian by the end of this. I'll be so. vegan. Oh, really? I'll be, yeah, I'll be like Mrs. <laughs> like Brooklyn podcaster. I'll, like, <laughs> I'll be full vegan by the end. But I'm like not at all, and now it's just like you're just like burdened with information, but you're not a better person. Um, I think that's yum. also deeply American in a way. Yeah. I, yeah. I feel that constantly. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's like I know all the bad things, but like – Am I'm, I going to change? I'm but a person. Like what yeah. am I going to do? Yeah. yeah. You know? I hope other people do. I was <laughs> not successful. Yeah. <laughs> Yet. Maybe I will be. What do you think the qualifications are for the most American food? Like should we try and come up with actual standardized categories here? Huh. Mm-hmm. I'm sure we can. Maggie, can you pull up a document so we can keep, <laughs> keep tabs? Court with, stenographer you know, Maggie. I want to make this as legit as possible. Yeah. I think an industrialization has to be part of it, absolutely, right? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. needs to be touched by a few human hands and a lot of robot hands. We won the war with <laughs> British intelligence, Russian blood, and American steel. Mm-hmm. And that's part of it. World War II has to come into play somewhere. I would yes. love for World... Okay, fantastic. And it certainly does with a hot dog. That's of like a course. big... World War II or the, the Great Depression in Great Depression. general. Yes. 
Um, that's a very people love to talk about the Great Depression. Still, I'm like, there's a new one. Like we yeah. can move on. <laughs> <laughs> Just keep. We'll run it back eventually. Yeah. What's, uh, the, what's the link to the hot dogs in the Great Depression? They were just cheap and could sell them to people in mass. Yeah, it was like a. It was kind of a. a timing thing where they were getting popular anyways and then the Great Depression hit and um, especially in Chicago and Baltimore Mm -hmm. they would sort of market the hot dog as like it's two meals in one which in Chicago is kind of I think it's a stretch where they're like it's a salad on top of a hot dog so it's it's two Two meals meals. Mm -hmm. and in Baltimore they're like not messing around because they wrap their hot dog in a slice of fried bologna so you do not need to eat for three days (laughs) after you eat wait how have I've never heard of a Baltimore style hot dog Oh, it's at it's uh, specifically at this Jewish deli in Baltimore um, called Atman's Deli, and it's been Lighting around. This down. It's, <laughs> it's this is our pilgrimage. This oh, is our wailing wall. It's truly amazing. I mean, it has all these like all, <laughs> that was disrespectful. Sorry, you were saying all these like hallmarks of hot dog places that I love, which is that it's been around for a hundred years. It's you're like, how is this place still open? It's burned down like three times. <laughs> And then, but but and there's like a line around the corner because mm-hmm. people just like love it. And there's you know, people who are like 80 years old that are like, I used to came come here when. And you're like, all right, all right, <laughs> I just want my bologna hot dog. I feel like old people loving it should be part of this. That, that I is feel true. like mm-hmm. we we uh, have you ever been to Cupid's hot dogs? In there, there's probably like five or six around it's LA. Great. Yeah, Ooh, um, no, we, we interviewed the uh, she's the daughter of the founders. Um, and she was talking about how her name's Morgan Walsh, uh, mm-hmm. fantastic, great roller skater too. Follow her yeah, on Instagram. Yeah, kick-ass roller skater. <laughs> and, you know, she was talking about how um, during the pandemic they shut down and mm-hmm. her parents had died somewhat um, recently before that. And she didn't mm-hmm. know if she wanted to take over the family business, her and her sister. Mm-hmm. And then she had somebody come in after they had just reopened in that like initial stint after the first shutdown. Uh-huh. And there's this 90-year-old woman who's just crying with joy eating a yeah. Cupid's hot dog oh, because she's like, really really I used sweet. to have this every single week and with my husband who died and I couldn't have my comfort so like i think the Aww. comforting of the elderly is like a i think that's a big, i think that's kind of a big <laughs> yeah. part of it i don't know you know in japan fits into... they like take care of their elderly and like put them in a house and uh-huh. stuff we just feed them like <laughs> give them hot dogs. have a hot give dog hot and that's beautiful <laughs> oh. I, now i feel bad for bullying that old lady in baltimore where <laughs> i was like worry. all right <laughs> don't worry i'm an out-of-towner i came here to get the gross hot dog and leave but the atman's hot dog Rocks. I love hearing about hot dog succession planning too. I know. <laughs> it's really exciting. Honestly, there's a uh, Wiener Schnitzel. There was a whole lot of uh, yeah. drama going down mm-hmm. with uh, who took over. I don't know the ins and outs of it, but we were like trying to maybe book somebody from Wiener Schnitzel for the podcast, and oh, I yeah. was like, this seems messy. There's two. There's also there is a real what my favorite hot dog succession planning thing is from this Ohio um, chain called Tony Paco's. Okay, and the Paco's were just like duking it out absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely, like screwing each other over right and left. I like, love that stuff. Going, it, it was like actual. It was very low stakes. Actual succession. Mm. It was great. Someone shredded documents. Oh my god! Someone sabotaged their cousin. Ooh. Like it was just over. And then, and then, um, uh, they got bought out by a company. No one in the family owns it anymore. Yep, that's what corporate happens. intrigue, Maggie. Happens. Corporate intrigue. Oh yeah. yeah. Maybe in and then like in parentheses, sexy question mark. Because I feel like that's American. <laughs> that's something that we love. Yes. Corporate yeah. intrigue is sexy? No, no, no. Like a sexy corporate intrigue. Like if somebody slept with somebody to steal the documents for the, you know, like just in case that comes huh, up. All right. Uh, my my favorite hot dog place that I ate at growing up, it's in Allentown, Pennsylvania, where my family's from. We used to go okay. there like every winter for Christmas and whatnot. Mm-hmm. It's called Yakos. And this has. Oh, you told me about Yakos. Yeah. yeah. Do you know yeah. who found the family that founded Yakos? No. Uh, so it's called Yakos, Y O C C O apostrophe S. Okay. Um, it is actually. God, I-A-C-O-C-C-O, Iacocca. And it is Lee Iacocca, who is, like, the CEO of GM during the, like, oh, wow. the race against, like, Japanese automobile manufacturers. And he became, like, what? an American folk hero for, like, basically reviving, I believe, Pontiac. I could be getting the stories wrong with the car manufacturers. What? But he became this, like, American CEO industrial folk hero for, uh-huh. like, kind of, like, beating Japan and that really weird Japanophobic, you know, stage that sure, they had. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Um, and he just happened to open a chain of hot dog restaurants a where chain? they sell pierogies. Oh, my God. That's so... 
weird and evil. Man, I wasn't even going to say hot dogs as my most American food, but now that we keep coming up oh with all gosh. this, it's yeah, it's really beautiful. I had a joke answer, but I'm like, it really is hot dogs. <laughs> it is hot dogs. It's, I, and I, I feel like off of the corporate intrigue, that's also the like the folk hero stuff because yeah. every hot dog business has a like folk hero at the center of it mm-hmm. for the most part. It's like always named after the business owner. Mm-hmm. There's always a huge picture. They're usually dead. Sometimes they're not. <laughs> um, Maybe but, folk hero. <laughs> Folk hero got to be in it. <laughs> or even with like that Costco anecdote that I can't stand. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Where the CEO of Costco <laughs> threatens to kill someone. I'll if, kill you. <laughs> <laughs> if the hot dog doesn't cost a dollar fifty, and everyone every that I feel like that story goes viral every three mm-hmm. months. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like right up there with like Keanu Reeves is nice, yeah, and you're like. Yeah. We knew this. <laughs> yeah, Robin Williams would speak to homeless people on set. Yeah, right. the same, same kind of things. We like want to we believe that somebody's out there fighting for us. Right. You know, and it has to be the CEO of Costco. And you're like, that, that's very that's American, yeah. thinking that the CEO of Costco could be acting in your best interest. Correct. Like, also, I, I, I love Costco. Get a life. I, I hate, I I hate Costco so you much. Hate- I hate Costco Whoa. for the very simple reason. Everybody, I love buying. If in we bulk. if we like waste, <laughs> if we and this is I fa- any if you identify as a fan, I love you very much. You're my best friend. Give him um, a kiss. Give him a but, kiss. Uh, okay, thank you. Um, but <laughs> we get a lot of social co- moment. <laughs> <laughs> got a milk stuff. No, but we get a fair amount of comments about food waste. Sure. Right. We waste a single chicken nugget in an episode, and you know, to me, that's like a it's a it's a business thing. We're making content. If sure. You, any set is going to have a certain amount of waste of in very many regards. That's the business. Mm-hmm. Um, 40% of all household food just gets chucked in the trash That's can. That's very mm-hmm. true. Costco is out here selling 15-pound bags of spinach. You know what I mean? That's like true. buying in bulk <laughs> does not actually help you in the long run based on the amount of food waste that it creates. And so I've always had this personal vendetta mm-hmm. against Costco mm-hmm. that we need to be like buying smaller rather than bigger. For me, you know? it's just a hub for paper towels. I buy like a lot of paper <laughs> I, towels I and I buy a lot of microfiber towels and I buy like my toilet papers from Costco. And mm. I just, I, let me tell you, I go I go like once or twice a year and I just stack my walls and I never have to think about it again until it's like maybe a year later I gotta go find it. I'm going to preempt every <laughs> single comment that we're going to get from Costco shoppers who are I going, I shop at Costco and I've never wasted food in my life. Who's liar. wasting the 40%? Well, you're lying. Who, statistically, <laughs> you're you liar. are doing it. You. Um, <laughs> anywho. Wow, now the parasocial tie has been severed. <laughs> no, I'm so sorry, baby. Come I back. I didn't mean it, baby. Kiss. Come on. One more kiss. Thank you. It's gotten weird. It's gotten weird now. I came into this conversation convinced that the most American food was a Twinkie. Ooh. That's a, that's a solid point, though. I was convinced. Number one, same as a hot dog because it's phallic. Yeah, correct. Mm-hmm. And like all American, <laughs> all of the most American of... foods are phallic. You can write that down. Phallic question mark. It also tastes um, like chemicals. <laughs> yes, it's all chemicals. It's an incredible story. And I just think there's nothing quintessentially more American in my mind as, as someone who was born in America, but my parents are immigrants. The Twinkie is the quintessential American food, the way that it's prepackaged, how mm. yellow it is, how when you were a kid and you were looking at the wall of snacks that you could get, your eye immediately went to that yellow ass mm-hmm. cake. Mm-hmm. Something about it. That's not how you spell phallic. Maggie's Oh my God, Maggie. L-L-I-C-K. P-H. Oh my God. This is, today's the day we found out Maggie has never seen the word phallic spelled without... <laughs> oh, Maggie. I'm it's, sorry. It's not your fault. The public education system in Irvine, California, one of the best in the world, <laughs> failed you. Way to go. But I really do think something about I think the Twinkie and the hot dog are kind of neck and neck when it comes to like Amer- mm-hmm. best American foods or most American foods, just for the sheer fact that. Whenever you think about it, it's like people used to tell you that a Twinkie could last in a nuclear holocaust. <laughs> yeah, I was yeah. always told that. I don't yeah. know if it's true. And that was yeah. a real concern yeah. for yeah, a lot, yeah, especially yeah. like my parents' generation. Yeah, my yeah. dad took a blood oath in case wow. the Ruskies ever invaded <laughs> that he was going to go to the woods and start shooting. No so, way. Yeah. That's so fun. That, that's probably why they said that because it just like came out during that era. I don't know anything yeah. about Twinkie history. Oh, my gosh. You want me to tell you right now? Yeah. Give me Twinkie okay. lore. So it was invented in 1930 <laughs> in family. Illinois. Oh, Great Depression. Yeah. Oh, okay. So Great okay. Depression food. Um, Initially, it was stuffed with banana cream. But then whenever World War II happened, World War II reference. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, they ended up filling it with a white filling we know today. And then um, they had a really interesting a way that they would deliver the food. So they would actually make it in a factory and a person would physically go and drop it off. They never scaled to a massive amount until they went bankrupt. 
Mm. And then someone bought them out for four hundred and ten million dollars, and then they started to. When was that that they went bankrupt? Do you know um, like a rough time period? It looks like in two thousand four, Interstate Bakeries filed for Chapter Eleven bankruptcy. Because of the low carb Atkins and South Beach diet oh, culture, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> throw Ooh, that in there too. Culture but is... if you just suck the cream out, then it's not bad for you. What? It's it's, it's keto. If you suck, if you just suck the cream out, oh, I don't know what keto means. Keto? The Sorry. cream is keto. No, it's no, not. But like, I grew yeah. up with so many freaking Orange County moms who would go through the In and Out drive through, and they'd be yeah. like, "Give me a three by three extra cheese, animal style." Yeah, or not animal style, uh, protein, protein style. Because yeah, you know, yeah, the yeah, only yeah. bad part for you is the bun. I'm just like, oh, I'm a child, yeah. and I'm internalizing all of this. Yes. <laughs> that. Ooh, the diet culture intersection is important. Yeah, because yeah. I'm sure that there was some sort of version of like a low calorie Twinkie. I wouldn't at some be surprised point. if someone yeah. probably. Oh my god, did they? Well, if there are definitely know. plans of the works, because this is going through the Olestra era. Probably. You know about the o- Olestra? No. This is a very Tell American story. Ooh. So real quick, this hey, uh, this might be a, a, a ringer in there. Um, so Olestra was a brand of chips. They were called Wow uh, Wow exclamation wow, so point. point. I remember. Yeah, Wow uh-huh. chips, and they used a <laughs> uh, a brand name chemical called Olestra that effectively allowed your body to not digest fat. And oh. so it would you would you know eat these delicious fried potato chips and your body wouldn't recognize the fat as food because I don't know if it was like hydrolyzed with the chlorine mm-hmm. molecules something mm-hmm. like that. Oh my God. Um, but it, it, what goes in must come out. Yes. So if your body's not digesting the fats, it just passes through you, and it was just making people poop their pants. <laughs> and so it's the ultimate trade off, right? Like the Ooh. the white noise Don DeLillo thing yeah. of what is life if you're not afraid of death. Mm-hmm. It's like you know what are ca- what are excess calories if you're pooping your pants all the time. That's right. Yeah. It's a monkey's paw wish, and I kind of love that story. <laughs> but Twinkies definitely would have had that if the public didn't. They you know. kept their recipe until <laughs> until they got bought out in 2004, and they actually extended wow. the shelf life. To instead of be 25 days, it was 36 days. What and did then, they do to it? I don't know. <laughs> what did they they do? shoved, what did they it, with, do to they shoved it? it with a bunch of malarkey. <laughs> but I will say, whenever Pesticides. I think of America, I think of a little. I think of a little yellow cake. And their name is Twinkie. That's kind of it's got, well, it's yeah. got that shiny gold. It's, it's got that beautiful. like the Trumpian color. It's you know, yes. it's beautiful. And then you crack it open. You're like, there's like no cream in here, but I love it so much. And something about <laughs> Hostess cakes are very American too. Just the way yeah. that mm-hmm. you can't stop eating. <laughs> and like just like gas station culture too. Yeah, I feel like ga- gas stations are a thing. Also, if the food looks good with little Mickey Mouse hands, that definitely <laughs> helps. <laughs> Twinkies and hot dogs. Often you have the freaky little Mickey Mouse hands. <laughs> Uh, also, both are just good. Like they're Twinkies delicious. from like they go in your. They, they're easy to eat. Yeah, they, were you gonna say they just fit in your mouth real good? Because um, they're f a l l i c k. Yes, they're just, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they're just easy to eat too. You know, you just shove them in there. Yeah, is portability? Them. Does that have anything to do with? I it? feel like actually, I mean, that, that's go. a very American yeah. thing food to be able to like eat food on the go, and that mm-hmm. we've like exported to other cultures. Real, that, I mean, that's one of the fascinating things about hot dogs. Did, mm-hmm. Does Twinkies have, like, international versions of? Um, they never – in my research, it doesn't say that they did. But they did, once they got bought out, innovate a lot. So they had, like, the mint chocolate ones. They I had remember, the yeah. ones that even invented a cereal. <laughs> that's pretty oh, recent. So they were innov- innovating you within the, the brand. You have the Twinkie cereal? I've had this Have you cereal. tried it? It's good? Uh, no, it wasn't Okay, okay. Yeah. But I had it, and it was it was important to me. That and Pandora Flakes. <laughs> what are Pandora Flakes? I'm listening. <laughs> What are Pandora flakes? It's frosted flakes, but Tony the Tiger is Navi. Oh my God! Cult E to you, madam. Yes. Sorry, I I got really into Avatar when I've it came out, and I tried Avatar. to learn Navi for a sec. Re- you are you no fluent? No, I'm not fluent. I can't even read the prayers. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Were they blue? Were the flakes blue? The flakes were blue. Hell That's yeah. really yeah. awesome. Yeah. I've never seen Avatar 1, 2. Never seen it. Sorry. It's, even when you see it, it feels like you haven't seen it. Got I, it. I, it's, I, it's like pooping it. your pants. You, you, It's like eating the chip and then it, it just digests. Like, it's um, in my can't relate, now. Can't relate. One, I have the strongest digestive, <laughs> not to brag, one of the strongest digestive systems of anyone I've ever known. Two, Avatar left a massive impression on me. And everyone's like, oh, the story is Fern Gully, it's Pocahontas. Yeah, it's like in Harry Potter's Jesus. Like, are you new? We repeat what? themes through. Throughout storytelling and history, this is how Harry we connect. Is Avatar's Jesus? a well-told story. Shut up. Yeah, like you know, <laughs> is, Aslan. is Voldemort Satan? Yeah, and then uh, Draco Malfoy's like uh, who's Bill's the above? who's the goat with the the boobies? Baphomet. Baphomet. 
Draco Malfoy is a, the the goat with the boobies? Correct. Now I, I didn't go mine. to enough church. Uh, <laughs> I don't think I stayed long enough to get to the goat with tits. <laughs> yeah, I think that's more of like a Levian Satanism thing. But, okay. you know, potato, potato. I dropped out of church in seventh grade. <laughs> so maybe they didn't get to the sexy parts. Yeah, there's a lot of sexy parts. A lot of like, uh, sexy parts. Revelation has some fun stuff in it. Um, Speaking of cereal, I, I was initially going to say chili as my most American food. Oh, mm -hmm. interesting. Because you have the industrialization element to mm -hmm. it uh, where canning technology, you know, um, was in like the early 1900s. First industrial cannery in America was in 1908. But um, in 1811, it was actually developed for Napoleonic troops, which I just think is a fun oh, little historical fact. Uh, food cannery, you owe a lot of it to Napoleon and Louis Pasteur, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, it was, you know, the idea of America, what is it? Where are the borders? Where were the borders? You know what I mean? When? Like there's the phrase in like Texas and California, like a lot of like Mexican American families have mm -hmm. been here for a long time. We're like, we didn't cross the border. The border crossed us. Mm -hmm. And so that's yes. the most fascinating thing about Chile to me is that you see this like transnational migration that wasn't a migration at all because people were just always there eating chili and making it. Right. And so it initially comes from like Chile con carne, right? Which mm -hmm. is spelled C-H-I-L-E, the word for a hot pepper mm -hmm. in Spanish. Uh, actually comes from an indigenous word, nahuatl. Um, and uh, then in, I think it was like 1898, um, Americans got their hands on it, a dude named Engelhart. And he started making the first manufactured, mass-produced chili powder of all time. Cool. Trying to sell it to Americans. Even though a lot of the first Americans to go to, say, the Chili Queens of San Antonio in the 1800s. And you're coming off of, like, all the, you know, remember the Alamo propaganda that brought a bunch of tourists to Texas. Uh, and they're going down there. They're eating the chili con carne from the Chili Queens of San Antonio. And then so, like, white people were like, yo, we can jump in on this racket. We'll start mass-producing this mm -hmm. stuff. And then eventually in the early 1900s, uh, you get Lyman Davis... And his dog, what was it? It was a pet wolf named Kaiser Bill. And Boo. he named, speaking of folk heroes though, Lyman Davis's pet wolf Kaiser Bill became wolf brand chili to make oh. the, first, the first mass marketed chili. And then that was just sent all around America. And you end up with a big Mexican-American migration to Chicago. You get Chicago-style chili. You get a Macedonian immigrant in Cincinnati who just sees that people are eating spicy red meat slop. And he goes, we got something similar in Macedonia. Mm -hmm. I'm going to just call this chili. And then we get Cincinnati Skyline chili. Mm -hmm. You have a chili parlor open, and this is my favorite, in Green Bay, Wisconsin in the early 1900s. And this is, of course, it was all staged at the... Uh, Colombian Exposition in Chicago, There's where, where so everything much, came from that. Mm -hmm. So much hot dog stuff happened at the Colombian Exposition. That's where the, the Michael Jackson glove myth came from, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Which is <laughs> the most so BS funny. story of all time. Um, it's so made up. Yeah. But uh, a little chili parlor uh, in Green Bay, Wisconsin called Chili John's opened a second location. Where, Nicole? Burbank, California. Burbank, California, <laughs> baby. Wow. And I ate there once and the owner just made a real racist joke that made no sense and they were, I tried to order a tamale covered in chili and he goes, you don't want the tamales today. Something's wrong with them. And I said, what? And he goes, yeah, one person ordered and he said something's wrong with them. And I was like, why didn't you just say you were out of tamales? And he's like, I want to be honest. So anywho. <laughs> that wasn't, and now, the, ra and that now, wasn't now, the racist joke. No, the racist okay, joke had something, to do with, had something to do with Custer, and I just didn't get it. What? Uh, yeah, I was like, oh, it's really old-timey. Um, but anywho, so that is why I initially had chili, but now I'm saying mm. cornflakes. Whoa. <gasps> I mean, I, I would split the difference and say chili dog, because then I you get the, all the Fair. history of chili, because I knew a little bit of that chili history with, um, like, how Southern California and Mexican hot dogs, they're the same thing, but mm. Southern California is like, no, it's our hot dog. And yeah, like, yeah. Dude, same, same. Relax. <laughs> um, but I, I was going to argue it was – it's uh, this really dis – it's what my mom thinks is taco salad but isn't. Oh, hell that yeah. That feels very American <laughs> to me of like – I definitely – like my – coming from – I don't know. It's not really American to be coming from a good place, I guess. <laughs> but my mom like genuinely thinks that this thing she makes is taco salad. Mm -hmm. I have to and know. And it's an authentic it Mexican dish. And I'm just like, and she was like, yeah, I, I, I learned the recipe years ago. It's authentic. <laughs> oh, and, man. Oh, man. <laughs> and it is the most. Jamie, what's in the taco <laughs> salad? Jamie. From Massachusetts. <laughs> what's in the taco salad? The thing is, I love it. It's I think it's good, but it is it has nothing to do 
with anything. <laughs> Tacos but, or salad. So, yes, exactly. Okay, great. <laughs> um, so here's what you do. You get a bag of the red Doritos. And <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Wait, wait, wait. Pause. Hold on. Oh, yeah, pause, yeah. pause, pause, pause. <laughs> okay, hold back. on. This is called the taco salad. The first ingredient is red bag Doritos. <laughs> Shut up. Wait, hold on. The red. Are you talking about the, like the nacho cheese flavor? Yes. yes. Okay, okay, okay. Yes. Well, that's authentic. Yeah. <laughs> you, you open it a little... Let the air out. And then you start punching it. <laughs> American. Yeah, let out your American yeah. aggression. Yeah. Uh, you get it not down to like a, a you know, but make them smaller. Sure. Uh-huh. Um, pour that in the bowl. <laughs> then you're gonna want to fry up half a pound of hamburger. More if you're feeling, you know, yeah, crazy. Get the protein. You know, we need more hormones in our diet. A lot. Uh, yeah, a lot <laughs> of the cheapest <laughs> hamburger. <Turning it> big. <laughs> <laughs> then a uh, full bag of. Mexican cheese. My mom's like, it's authentic. <laughs> it's Mexican, uh, yeah. It's mm. uh, and then and then an entire bottle of Catalina salad dressing. <gasps> Catalina. It can be served hot or cold. Lo siento, it's a Catalina. Soupy hot. <laughs> yeah. uh, very very Mexican. <laughs> yes. Wait, sorry. Run back the. Ing- it's. I'm sorry. No, I've never been dumbfounded so, by this. By right, we we have a whole section. We talked about this earlier, where people write in their craziest hottest food takes, mm-hmm. and they're always like things that they make when they're, you know, hungry, when they're high, when they're desperate, whatever. This is the wildest thing I've ever heard. It's different when it's in front of you. Yeah, in person. <laughs> like, I can see person, your face. I can see your face and how excited you are about it. And I just want to... It's... <laughs> I really love it. I mean, it truly reminds me. I was like, oh, it was a simpler time when this was delicious. Oh, my gosh. Is there um, anything on top that you put? Like any... Oh no. No, no, like, tomato. No, like... What do you want? Thing, like, no, oh, you like, can, like, salt it. <laughs> Wait, Doritos, <laughs> ground I beef, want. Catalina dressing. What am I missing? And uh, bag of cheese. Bag of cheese. Oh, the bag of cheese. Bag of Mexican blend cheese, right? Yes. Yeah. It's Holy gotta be smokes. Mexican Three cheese. Three Mexican. cheese Mexican blend. Yeah. Do you like? Do you? Are you familiar with Catalina dressing? Yeah. It's, it's like, like it's just French, red, right? It's like red corn syrup. Is it like French dressing? It's French, but minus any it's of the creamy. other things. There's no. There's no creaminess. There's no emulsification. Uh huh. It's, it's like it's Ooh. literally it's corn syrup with like salt and tomato powder in it. It's incredible. And that's something people dish. eat? It's an authentic dish. It's like a salad dressing. Yeah, yeah, but I don't think anyone under Ugh, the age of 50 has eaten Catalina dressing. No, I grew, I grew up with it. And I think, like, I don't know if it's, like, more popular in New England or if my parents are just old or, like, <laughs> what the deal is. But anytime I have a bottle of it, people are like, oh, I, do, I hate this. Then they're yeah. like, what is this? And then they're like, I hate this. But, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I, I made a bowl of it as a way to, like, try to, like, connect with my boyfriend at the time. I'm like, this is the flavor of my youth. And he's like, I really, I can't even smell it. I can't, Aww. like, I can't be close That's, to this. I disagree Are with that, Are you guys still though. together? <laughs> no. Okay, good. Good, good, good. Good riddance, good riddance. That's the same boyfriend from the book. Uh, no, good no. <laughs> that guy, that was a long-term relationship. He could, okay. he could, he could take the, the taco salad. Got past the taco salad stage. Especially during like lockdown, I was making a lot of the taco salad because I was just yeah. like, I need to feel something. Yeah, 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 so yeah. I, was I get making it. A mm-hmm. lot. I get it. I get it. Yeah. Uh, I mean, hot dog sales spiked during the pandemic. That was a big thing, like popcorn and hot dog, which really? weirdly enough, yeah. that was also during the Great Depression. Popcorn and hot dog sales exploded. Wow. And they also exploded during the pandemic. So, I mean, like comfort foods in times of strife. And because, like, President Trump was like, we refuse to shut down any meat plant or make sure anyone is safe. And yeah, everyone's I like, reading that. Yes. And so they just kept pumping out was, the hot dogs. Yeah, so many people got sick. But we don't have to talk about that today. <laughs> it was really horrible. I love how we started by meeting each other by going, no COVID, and raising our hand. <laughs> yeah, we still test. We're responsible. We do. We do still test. Cornflakes were invented by a religious zealot who wanted people to stop masturbating yes. and gave people yogurt enemas. That's pretty big. Mr. Kellogg himself. Mr. Kellogg. Mm-hmm. And then his brother, mm-hmm. corporate in, corporate intrigue. One, sexy. You said yogurt enemas. Two, that, corporate there's intrigue. There's nothing sexy about a yogurt enema. Sorry. <laughs> That's what you think. So then, <laughs> Shut <laughs> up. Maggie, I hope you got that. I hope you don't, though. Maggie, cut it for the love of God. Cut and then out. his brother, his brother steals the recipe from him and then <gasps> starts a competing brand, which becomes Ooh. not... Post. Post General Mills. General Mills. Oh, That's okay. one of the big ones. I didn't though. know that. And a patient of K- Dr. Kellogg's, uh, he stole the recipe again, but tried to form a grain based coffee equivalent called Postum. That became Post. Huh. So, like Kellogg's, uh. Post, and then I think it's General Mills. It could be another one. Um, they all just came from, no, it was Kellogg's brother sued him for the rights to Kellogg. But so Kellogg's and Post, and the brother stealing the recipe, corporate intrigue. 
Yeah, it's piety. all tied to like, yeah, like puritanical, mm-hmm. like commanding your butt. Kellogg also had like a, I mean, he had only bad opinions, I'm pretty sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. He, he was like, oh, this, the sacredness of a woman's body. Mm-hmm. Like he had a lot of restricting, <laughs> like restrictive <laughs> there you go, Nicole. thoughts on women. In your diva era. <laughs> I oh, think so scary. I think yeah. what we have to decide now is what the most American food is. And I have I have a roundup. Okay. It's not a food, it's a meal. It is a bowl of cornflakes. Oh god. With whole oh, no. a bowl of cornflakes with whole milk, <laughs> mm. a chili dog, and a Twinkie for dessert. I, think I thought you were just gonna blend it. I thought you no, were just gonna, gonna make a blend it. <laughs> I think I think those three things together is the most American thing. Oh, but what you got to do is you got to put um, a flag in it. You got to put a U.S. flag. Yeah, in yeah. It. and then mm-hmm. sing the national anthem, then, which, as we all know, is the international players anthem by UGK. Oh. Nicole made me promise that I wouldn't say that, but <laughs> I'm freaking it out because it's true. It should be. It should be. I, I think if, if we're boiling it down, to, have you, has your mind changed at all on the the most American food? Ugh, have you been I swayed? Mean, I I I'm I'm willing to concede chili dog over just a, an old hot dog because I feel like that ticks a lot of other additional boxes yeah. like colonialism. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, yeah, I I'm I think chili dog Twinkie is a great one though because it's like mm-hmm. Twinkie's oh. an honor. It should just be an honorable mention. It's got How a uni- it's got a unified mascot which I like. Yeah, Twinkie someone the kid. I can believe in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got a cowboy yeah. hat on. Yeah, yeehaw. Yeehaw. Indeed. Nothing's more American than yeehaw. I just want to shove a hot dog inside a Twinkie. Have we done that before? We can Ooh. later today. We got hot dogs and Twinkies? A hot yeah, dog. we do. Yeah, that would work, right? Well, we, it would need to be kind of a narrow hot dog. We'll make it happen. Okay. okay. Hebrew, Hebrew Natty we'll Lights, the slim ones, the Virginia Slims of hot dogs. Those are <laughs> <laughs> still my favorite. And Costco CEO, I will kill you if you <laughs> don't bring back Hebrew National Hot Dogs. That was not a threat against your life. That was a callback. to You threatened... You, oh, God, I would it. like to eat the Hebrew National hot dogs at Costco as well. All right, Nicole and Jamie, we've heard what you and I have to say. Now it's time to find out what other wacky ideas are rattling out there in the universe. It's time for a segment we call Opinions Are Like Casseroles. I'm just letting you cook right now, man. What? You're the songstress of a generation. You got the voice of an angel. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Nicole Aguilera, you can chill. Nicole Aguilera, that's the best compliment you've ever given me. <laughs> hey, this is Brian from Michigan. Uh, big fan. I can't take credit for this uh, this hack, but when I was bartending, an old lady came in and uh, ordered a BLT with a side of lettuce, and then she then put the side of lettuce on top of the sandwich when she went to bite it, so it did not hurt for the roof of her mouth. Oh, okay. I've shared this with many people over my life, and everyone's mind has been blown. Okay. Oh, wow. okay. Okay. That's smart. That's just smart. Um, I feel like um, this is a good argument for <laughs> everyone having access to dental care. <laughs> because... <laughs> Because I have gum disease and I can't eat bon me. <laughs> Just oh too my crusty. Gosh. It's too damn sharp. I can't <laughs> like I can't eat it. It, it makes my mouth bleed. <sighs> I, I I see myself in her. I feel seen by that anecdote. I, as a fellow member of the soft teethed community, mm-hmm. as I have just a, a bunch of problems, and I'll tell you, we have good dental insurance. I still won't go. It's just too much childhood memories of bad things. I have great that. teeth. <laughs> I oh, take care of my yeah, teeth. Way to go. I don't all even... your friends are dentists. Exactly. You have like nine dentist friends. All, what? I, yeah, all my friends are dentists and I go to one every every now and then so I don't overload one of them. And mm-hmm. yeah, I don't use, I don't have dental insurance from work, by the way. I need to infiltrate your friend. Wait, you straight up didn't? You opted out. Sorry, this yep. is insular stuff, Jamie. Yep. You opted out of our dental insurance because you have so many dentist friends? Yep. You're saying that's like It's like $9 a month. I now don't. you don't have to pay it? You know what I can do with those $9 a month? What do you, what Get do you a bone <laughs> <laughs> Paramount. <laughs> the flag. <laughs> I didn't mean to hurt your feelings. <laughs> Just don't toast your bread. Just You don't need to toast yeah. your bread. I don't like, I don't love I toasted bread, say, but it might be because oh. of my teeth issues. <laughs> I was going to say, I kind of like it when my BLT isn't that toasty. I kind of like it on like one side of it is toasted and the other side is soft. Bread has already Ooh. been cooked. I like I like my BLTs not that toasty. You don't need to toast it. But I don't like when a sandwich is too wet. Mm, and that's, that's where you, that's that's where you and I did <laughs> You're talking to the wrong guy. I, ate, I made a Philly roast pork sandwich at home uh, this weekend and I just, you know, dipped the pork in the jus and just shoved it in there, wrapped it in foil, let it sit for a while. I wanted to watch a basketball game and so I'm sitting on 
on the couch and I <laughs> put a full size towel over my. You're proud of yourself. Oh my God. You're proud of yourself. I was like a plate. It's gonna splatter. A bowl. That's weird. Then I have to clutch my knees, and so I just put Beach a bathroom towel. towel. Yeah. <laughs> Look at your life. Look at your choices. Yeah. Thank you so much. And I just threw it in the wash immediately afterwards with the rest of my laundry covered in pork <laughs> juice. I do think the fact that it's the lettuce is on top is a little bit jarring, like at first glance. But yes. I can get over it, like the third or fourth time someone does it. It's not the first texture I want in my mouth. There is uh. something a little bit like multiverse about that, where if you yeah, walk into right. a bar and there's an old woman eating a BLT <laughs> in the wrong order, you're like, oh, I've stumbled into a universe I don't That's belong. That's very yeah. true. A sentient yeah. toaster is the president. And, exactly. Uh, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Hi, Josh and Nicole. So this is a question about coffee, which is not food. Uh-oh. Um, coffee is food. food. So I have a Discord that I'm in, and my friends and I oh, were talking one bad. night about uh, coffee and they said coffee doesn't hydrate you and I said that's not necessarily true because Mm-mm. I mean it does you know maybe dehydrate you have in, so many in ways but it has it. water in it because it is water it's made with water and then they started dog piling on me <laughs> because Discord, they man. think coffee is not water it's coffee um, but it's made by using water and making a solution using coffee grounds so like steak I just is also know, majority is water. Coffee water, you know, is water put through coffee still water or is it something <laughs> else? Are there molecules in there? This guy's I'm having a, a meltdown. Yeah, me <laughs> too, though. <laughs> Low key, I'm having a silence. Anyway, I just want the torment to end. Thank you. <laughs> lay, lay off the coffee, dude. I think. Um, <laughs> May I take this really quickly? I have a lot of thoughts. Sure, go ahead. I have a lot of thoughts. As a person who who tries to, you know, I exercise regularly. It's good for mental and physical health. And I try and keep myself hydrated, but I also need to consume caffeine Uh uh, or I'll physically get the shakes because this is where I'm at. Okay. Coffee is neither food nor drink. It's medicine. It's a drug, right? It's a drug. Okay. It's a drug. Uh, In the world, Round has used caffeine as a drug um, for thousands of years. Mm. Um. When you say coffee, there's no one essential thing you're talking about, right? You get a venti blonde roast from Starbucks that has 420 milligrams of caffeine. 400 is the daily toxicity it's level the FDA hurt. recommends. Ooh, right? So that's insane. Hurt. But there's also 24 ounces of water. You get, say, um, a Vietnamese coffee, right? That's probably going to have about 100 milligrams of caffeine, but it's going to be in like a three ounce thing. You get a shot of espresso. It's maybe an ounce and a half and has 70 milligrams of caffeine. So what you really need to balance is total water amount versus caffeine level because caffeine is a diuretic. It bleeds you of water. Anybody who's drank a venti, blonde roast from Starbucks and just pissed buckets afterwards knows that. And so that is physical dehydration. So it's dark piss. <laughs> and I don't know if this is just me, but it smells like coffee coming out. Yeah, oh, right. That's, oh, that's a real thing. Yes, right? the devil's piss. The devil's yeah. piss. Oh man, so I hate this if podcast you drank so much right decaf now. Decaf <laughs> coffee, for instance, you're right. Jesus. It is a majority water, but it's the caffeine in there that's really going to um in bodybuilding, they call it dry you out, Ugh. right? And so you worst s- conversation. So ever. if you have a very weakly brewed cup of coffee, there is a good chance that it can hydrate you. However, standard American drip coffee, which is a caffeine bomb that people from any other part of the world are just absolutely disgusted, disgusted by, yeah, yeah, as they should be. Uh huh. Um, Americans, the most. I'm sorry, coffee's <laughs> the most American. <laughs> But if you think of like drinking an Americano, right, which is a shot of espresso yeah. plus a certain amount of water, mm-hmm. you're correct in that sense that you are just taking a shot of espresso and then hydrating yourself with 12 ounces of water. But the strength of that brew and the caffeine level, um, including the roast on the beans, a darker roast has less caffeine, so it's going to dehydrate you less. Too many confounding variables. But God, stop tormenting him. Whoa. Discord does that, man. What the hell is Discord? I can't tell if it's Discord or the gallon of coffee he drank before <laughs> calling. <laughs> I can only empathize. I wish him the best. <laughs> yeah, um, Five Guys is the worst burger chain Five in Guys? America. Yeah. Um, mm. All of their food is extremely bland. Huh. It has no yes. flavor. And I don't like it. Um, huh. The majority of my family is obsessed with it, and they have since cast me out of the house. Uh, therefore, oh, I'm living I'm under a cardboard sorry. box, but I will continue to live off of McDonald's burgers for the rest of my life before yes. I ever eat another five guys burger. Thanks. You got to respect the man oh. of principle. I love the way he says five I love that voicemail. I love five guys. I, I really like that accent. <laughs> the vibe of that voicemail was that at once he hung up, he threw his phone <laughs> out the window. I was like, I'm done. Um, I agree. I don't like five guys. I think it costs too much money and the food is wet. Oh, well, that's the only part about Five Guys that I do love because I keep a beach towel in my car. And then I can just... Giant towels. I've never enjoyed a Five Guys burger, but maybe I'm ordering it wrong. 
You don't need to put that on yourself. Nicole. Feel, it can just be their fault sometimes. Yeah. I feel like there. I've seen a lot of <laughs> viral TikToks about the cheeseburger grilled cheese being good. Yeah, I don't know. they they famously don't salt their burger patties. Like straight up, they That's as a corporate, what it is? it's like how why? Olive Garden doesn't salt pasta water. That's why it's I don't bad. know. I don't know Grow why. Up. Like Olive Garden doesn't salt their pasta water because they said it would quote corrode the pans earlier, and they're working on slim margins. <laughs> well, All the labor lawsuits too; those are eaten up. What could have been used for salt yeah. budget? Yeah. Um, but no, I've I've never loved F- Five Guys. I think does a few things really well. It's cooked really, really fresh. They give me free peanuts, and I love yeah, peanuts. There's peanuts is... there. The fries are cooked fresh, even though I don't think they're good. It's you know the same thing as they're in and out. They're always hot. They're always they're hot. Always they're hot. never they're good. Plentiful. Yeah. But it is very, very wet, which I love because they wrap it in foil. So there's literally no right. What other burger chain wraps in foil? None that I know of. It's the... normally in the little diaphanous paper. Yeah, the paper yeah. that's going to let moisture out, right? <laughs> Give you some diaphanous. Thanks. Ooh. Especially someone who's been watching Carnival Road, just watching Cara Delevingne's wings flap around for the last two weeks. Pats on the back. Some diaphanous. Um, anywho, uh, yeah, not a big Five Guys person. I used to, that was like a big option for like high school dates um, yeah. when oh. I was in school. And it was, um, yeah, you could go to Five Guys and that, because there was like a good sitting area, you could eat a wet burger with someone you like. Or if you could, if someone really liked you, you could maybe talk them into driving you the half hour to Wahlburgers. No and, and way. Wahlburgers. Where the food is also overpriced and not very good. <laughs> Um, but interesting. But you get to be in the aura of Donnie? All of them. All, all of them. them. They're all involved. Uh, all think, five guys. All five, <laughs> the real five guys. Yeah. All, all of them have a little bit of money in it. I, yeah. Good for them, I don't watch the you know. show. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh. An enchilada is a burrito. <laughs> Can you play that again? <laughs> she just what? escaped. <laughs> She laughed. An enchilada. She laughed. A burrito. That's a giggle. I thought she was getting murdered. I thought it was no, no, no. a found footage. No, no, no. They went like this. Went, <gasps> I thought it was like. <gasps> no, no, no. They went, they went. <gasps> and okay. then they covered their mouth to like compose themselves. And then they said their opinion. Oh, God. I know because I understand that kind of reaction. And human emotion. <laughs> yes, yeah, I, I understand it. human emotion. I thought well. it could have been also her waking up in the middle of the night. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think so. <laughs> I got to call the hotline. <laughs> Uh, what'd you say? An enchilada is a sandwich? As a burrito. As a burrito? Oh, an enchilada is a burrito. Uh, okay. Sure. <laughs> yeah, I guess. <laughs> it's baked in a dish. That's the only difference. It's not, actually. Traditional enchiladas are not. I'm sorry. Kill Nicole, me, can I mansplain enchiladas at you real Kill quick? Me Let now. me do it. Go Let ahead. Me. Let me do it. Traditional enchiladas are, are most often not baked in a dish. Um, well, it is literally the tortillas are fried, <laughs> put in the chili, put in the chili sauce, and then they're rolled up. You know why like I don't that. like enchiladas? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Too wet. <laughs> Dude, eat wet foods. They're good. You just got to get past How the How are we talking about chili dogs all Too day? Wet. You don't love wet foods. I like, I know, but if if, there, if there's good bun infrastructure on mm. a chili dog, then you can really like handle it. You know, you can <laughs> handle it. Can I, like, <laughs> I, I, want, I want the bun infrastructure to be stressed though, like the mm-hmm. dykes in Amsterdam. That feels weird Do to say. Do you know Wait, what we on. never talked about? Maggie. Hamburgers. What's wrong with us? Uh, what you? The Dykes in Amsterdam is fine. Don't worry about it. Why do you feel it. so messed up? I don't know. Dykes in <laughs> Amsterdam is fine. The vibe no. shifted. Yeah, God. <laughs> Why do we talk about hamburgers at all during the pod? Oh, it's kind of like slightly less American than hot dogs. Oh, okay. Whatever. Sorry. Right? <laughs> Sorry. An enchilada is a burrito. I... Agree. It's made Good with corn. T- it's traditionally made with corn tortillas, and you can't so make a corn tortilla what? A burrito. And I kind of disagree with that. Okay, then well, you no, disagree. maybe you can with like. I'm thinking about American Betty Crocker as enchiladas. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's where my mind is. Enchiladas yeah. and flour tortillas don't taste right. They simply don't taste right. It's got to be corn. I don't I agree will, with and you, we are, Nicole. We are. We can have irreconcilable differences. It'll get settled. Stop in bringing divorce. up divorce terms with me. I'm it saying makes me sad. We're not even married. There's no such thing as a happy marriage ending in divorce. We're not you married. Know I mean? You can. Fine. For, we'll stay together for Jamie. <laughs> Stop. 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 It reminds her of things. <laughs> <laughs> to go home and eat four pounds of my mom's taco salad. <laughs> God. Last Taking one. Taking shots of Catalina dressing. <laughs> Let's do one more. Let's do one my more. My throat burns thinking about Catalina Ugh. dressing. <laughs> Hey, Josh and Nicole, this is Andre from San Jose. Now, I don't know if this is the Mandela effect, but remember how they would have those crap singles commercials and they would show things that you could put them on. And one of them I remember was a 
uh, chicken drumstick on a grill. <laughs> uh, no way. I don't know if I'm crazy, but I remember seeing that as a kid and I did it. And it's one of the most amazing things in the world. And I keep wow. doing that until uh, today. So I uh, just wanted to hear your thoughts on that. I do. I feel like the Mandela effect has to have a certain mass appeal to it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Everyone thought this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a single serving Mandela effect. I definitely, I, I would believe it. Same. I haven't tried it. We would definitely put craft singles on things. People put craft singles on hot dogs or under. <laughs> hot dogs. Yeah. yeah, guilty. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> good. put craft singles on just about anything. <laughs> so this makes a lot of sense to mm-hmm. me. Uh, I I grew up just eating. You take like this is the only time we ever ate fresh vegetables. It was like broccoli that was freshly steamed, no salt or nothing, and you would just put it on the table and then put a single craft American. Ooh. Single Sounds in there, so good. and it would drape over. It would the steam would just yeah. cause it. You mm-hmm. watch it was like a time lapse of a flower blooming. You know, and just <laughs> lovingly caress it. Melting craft singles is like one of the more sensual mm-hmm. foods mm. up there with uh, over easy eggs. Yes, yes, yeah. We, Where you're just like, mm, it, there's a certain something. If you going pair on the here. two together. Mm-hmm. Got oh my god! <laughs> too, too, too sexy, too yeah. sexy. That's the like the, the wiggliness of a poached egg with the soft yolk. Good lord! Mm-hmm. <laughs> we talked about how that's the sexiest egg. Yeah. Um, I, this sounds very Korean. It sounds very Korean to me. Putting uh, cheese is on that tracking for anybody else? Craft single on the drumstick. Yeah. Is yeah. it a baked drum? Do you say grilled? It's it on the grill. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like, it makes sense in, like, Korean barbecue when you have, like, a little container of cheese and you can put it on, like, the meat, but, like, no. I feel like Korea and Japan right now are, like, pioneering new ways to add cheese to things, <laughs> right? In the way that, like, that's, yeah. you know, cheese cheese foam tea was sort of, like, you know, exported back yeah. here. Mm-hmm. Um, you go to a lot of Korean barbecue spots now and they'll just bring you a thing of melted cheese and, like, wrap it around the chicken mm-hmm, for you. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Korean, like, yeah. uh, Korean corn dogs are half sausage, half mm-hmm. cheese. I love those yep. so much. Yeah. Great they case in shift point. Mid, uh, they shift mid-dog. It's it's yeah, it's cr- <laughs> thrilling. When you find it, you're like, oh, it's all gone now. New experience. <laughs> They're also sprinkled in sugar, typically, right? Yeah, like, yeah. That's, it's potato, God. so so it's the corn dog, and then it's potato, and then it's sugar, and it's not like typical granulated sugar. It's like a little bit bigger than like typical a sanding cream. sugar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Ooh, the most American <laughs> food isn't American at all. It's Korean. It's wow. the Korean corn dog. Fine. We did it. We did it. We found it. And also, the part that doesn't even have to do with the first part of the podcast. One thing you you talk, I we're, we're supposed to rap, but like I'm fascinated by the fact that I'm, it's. We don't have any indigenous roots in our food systems that like sort of still ended up as Americana, right? Like yeah, there's very really. little in Mexico yeah. all over. You talk about like, you know, uh, corn tortillas have been around for sure. like 10,000 years, which is incredible. Mm. Um, but corn dogs, cornbread, corn staple crop sure. of the Americas, sure. you know, root, rooted in like, you know, the history of enslaved people cooking in the mm-hmm, South, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, still a big soul food thing. Sure. Batter a hot dog in it. Mm-hmm. Sell it at Muscle Beach to a bunch of greased up gorillas. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, that's pretty American. <laughs> it is. That's my final stand. That's my final stand. <laughs> uh, Jamie, uh, Jamie, so much thinking to be <laughs> podcast for now. Exact. <laughs> yes. Book very. Have, book very. Have, book have right. Very. Good book. Big. Book Dog. all done. Yeah. Hot dog book all done. All done. <laughs> all <laughs> done. Bye bye. I, I know that exact emotion that would have book being done. It's just like, get the hell out of here. Um, seriously, thank you so much for being on the podcast. Everybody, That's check out Raw Dog wherever books are sold. Probably. I just yeah. said that. It sounded right. Wherever. But get it from your local bookstore. That's friendly. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Bezos don't need more money. Nope. Gotta shine that head up more. <laughs> See you all next time. <laughs> or do we, we have like a more outro thing to do? We have three intros and seven outros. <laughs> <laughs> what are you saying? And thank you for listening to A Hot Dog is a Sandwich. we got new audio-only episodes every Wednesday and the video version over on Friday. And if you want to be featured on Opinions Are Like Casseroles, you can hit us up on our hotline. <laughs> 833-DOG-POD-1. Okay, you don't have to do that anymore. What? No, that's, that entices people. Uh, I will say it actually does the exact opposite. I don't think so. Agree mm-hmm. to disagree. Are we done? <laughs>